Let's get started. Perfect. Okay, great. But you Beat can do me it. it. Everyone can do it. Just what's important is having start. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, cool. So uh, I'll dive in. I'm going to go over the content from the chapter, but to be honest, it was not that in depth. Most of it was the exercises were just, uh, you know, remembering how to use regular expression, but he didn't actually go into teaching those in the chapter, which is understandable because I wouldn't want to teach them either. Um, so first we're going to go over some character vector basics. I think we all know these things. They're delimited by pairs of quotes, single or double. You use the slashes and escape character to include characters that may be problematic in strings, such as quotations, oh, print, uh, output strings with unrendered escapes, whereas cat displays the rendered strings and the missing value marker is na underscore character underscore. Um, some more basics, really not. Oh, did I get the wrong slash? That <laughs> That is a uh, classic. Let me, let me verify move. it because, yeah, Probably. other one. Okay, cool. Um, you made the, the cool one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, you can use C or rep to create character vectors of length greater than one. Length just shows how many strings there are in the vector where n character is vectorized to show the number of characters within each string within the vector. Um, and then paste is used to concatenate strings. And there's also paste zero, which is slightly more efficient when you don't need spaces. Um, so I sprint F, is used full for formatting strings for presentation. Like if you're gonna be making a report um, out of your data um, and the first argument in sprint F is a format string, which starts with the percent sign. And that is how you indicate how you would like your strings to be printed out. Um, and you can do a lot of customization with precision string width justification, et cetera. Um, we will go into some examples in the exercises of Sprint Def, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Um, but here are some examples of ways that you can use the formatting. Um, and a little insight into how tall I am. Um, That's good. Okay. So, and I think exercise one. I'm that one. tall, also. <laughs> no worry, I'm so. <laughs> um, so that I think the exercise one was basically just to look at the documentation for sprint apps, but I, I grabbed a couple of uh, examples as well. Um, to read and write text data from files, you can use read lines and write lines. Again, the, this, the content in this chapter was not that stimulating. Oh, good, good, no worry. Uh, okay, so pattern searching, getting into some fun stuff. Um, if you want to search whole strings, you can do x equals equals y or x in y. Um, these are vectorized differently, which is also one of the exercises that we'll go over later, yep. so I won't belabor it. Um, for partial matching, you can search starts with for the initial part of the string or character match for partial matching throughout a string. Um, for matching, Anywhere you can use uh, Grepple. I'm never sure how to pronounce some of these functions, but <laughs> Grepple works for me. Um, the order for Grepple is the thing you're searching for and then what you're searching in, or how you phrased it was needle in haystack. Um, the, that was useful for me. What did you say? The the needle haystack, I think I will, it will stick to my mind. Yeah. And uh, that's if I have to take one step from this chapter, it will just be that. Right, I, I do find that very helpful. Um, it's a fun little mnemonic. Uh, so you can set a, the parameter fix to the true to search for a specific set search. Um, and you can also specify to ignore the case for searching. So if you don't care about case match. And then a grapple, I thought this was interesting. I uh, wanted know. to look more into the documentation, but it uses approximate matching based on basically how many insertions, deletions, and like moves you need to uh, make to match two strings. So it's based on a measure of edit distance. Um, I hadn't used that before. I thought that was interesting. Uh, yeah, my idea is like it's close to a fuzzy match. Right. It, it, uh, yeah, I, was I have not explored enough. So Do you know what the more... like difference is between like something like edit distance and fuzzy matching? Are they That's just... a good question. 
I think I think they use uh, the same. I, I think you can specify which like version of edit distance, basically, or, right. or which version of string distance you want to use in in either case. Yeah. Um, but fuzzy matching, I guess, usually people talk about in the context of like um, like joining two tables or something like that. I think. And, yeah, and... you can also use it in um, um, in my field. It's also using some kind of geocoding. When you oh, are like trying to match addresses mm -hmm. to correct mm -hmm. addresses, and obviously in the database you have an address correct, and then this is basically data that you get from like a users, and like you know, let's say like I'm living Candlewood, uh, and I will put the one letters like when I'm typing it, and like let's say like the E will be like before one, one typo, mm -hmm. and then the fuzzy matching is also used here, I think, but yeah. Yeah, but I didn't know that BaseR had that function. I because there are different. I think there's a like a string distance package or something like that mm -hmm. that I had always used. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't know that. I, I use it's fuzzy matching know. a fair amount too, it, because I work with educational data and schools and districts mm -hmm. are terrible at yeah. keeping their records clean. So we do a lot of fuzzy matching of like school names, district names, because they're all like end up coded in slightly different ways with some things abbreviated and not. Mm -hmm. So. Um, the data is so messy. We rely on a lot of fuzzy matching. So, but yeah. Cool. Um, so then we use some matching skills to do exercise 6.2 um, to re-implement some <laughs> functions based on the output of Grepl. And so Grepl returns a logical vector of matches. Um, and then, so we were asked to mimic both grep with the value I false. It was better than mine. <laughs> um, so this uh, grep false with value equals false just returns the index of values that match. So I use which logical um, to, I had stored logical to output of grep yeah. over back here um, to get the indexing and then to do the Greppel value true, which returns the character of selected, the characters of selected elements. Um, I just use the like subsetting brackets yeah. to extract um, the components of the, my, sorry, my cat is. Uh, this I'm one I have right my property. The, the previous one, your version is better. <laughs> what did you do? Uh, I think I just went to one length the something and then mm. the, the indexes of it. <laughs> yeah, I went. But which is better, no? Yeah, I went back um, to some of the previous chapters because I he does a lot of like hint, hint, nudge. Like I just taught you this. Like go back and find it. I think in his exercises. Um, so I did do some review and which which is yeah. nice. Uh, yeah, actually. the which is is pretty like it's good. Yeah. Good job. My cat's being inappropriate. Um, okay, keep going. I don't say uh, Wait. Sorry, what did you say? I, I don't see it. <laughs> oh, well, he's over here trying to destroy a blanket. Oh, cute. I think I have very similar cats. Like, it's the tigerish, no? Yeah, Tabby, and he's he's pretty fluffy. He's kind of long-haired, and he okay, so mine really is going at the blanket. Anyway, <laughs> um, so then we got into a little bit of regular expressions and how to use them. He didn't really talk about, like, how to write regular expressions, but... Um, he did go into how do you can use them within functions. So you can set in those same search uh, functions that we were just looking at, you can set Perl equals true. I actually, do you know what, why Perl, P-E-R-L, like what does that stand it's for? It's a computer language. <clears throat> oh, okay, great. Yeah, it's a computer language that's, uh, that was used, that's still used, I guess, but um, it's, I think it's mostly designed for researcher. Mm. Uh, I don't know, like, uh, so it's, uh, and it's very efficient to passing uh, documents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, when you refer to Perl equal true, you refer to the way Perl uh, do regular expression. Mm -hmm. And th that's, that's it. Cool. Yeah. So it's uh, a computer language. And so then we went into an exercise yep. um, using the regular <clears throat> expression skills. So he asked us to match things based on file extensions and file names. Um, so cool. yeah. uh, the I instead of actually doing list files, I just created a vector. I've done the same. 
to imitate um, and then use this regular expression to identify things that end with CS have CSV. I guess I could have done this more um, accurately by saying that like this. No, I did put this. No, it's good. Okay, great. Yeah. I had I had self doubt. Regular expressions truly are a nightmare for me. You, you could add a, point, a dot uh, before CSV. So in, hmm. in the weird case, you have a file that's named like let's say ACSV. It will have, right. uh, uh, but outside of it, it's good. I mean, uh, I didn't understand quite the question if he wanted like just CSV and just CSV GZ and then CSV not at the hand. So I have done the the two version of it, but your version is good. I mean. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's not always super clear with his ask, yeah, but, um, and then, yeah, same thing again, starting with That's this and the then one. Yeah. ending with uh, the CSV. Yeah. So um, just for the vocabulary, if we go back, the carrot version is a look after, I think. Oh. Uh, and the dollar sign is a look behind. On right. The regions. Yeah, but I had to do it. a lot of refreshing my memory on regular expression well it's it's i mean this is basically like the only two you need to know i feel like and um the 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 pipe like the um, that you use on the first one so right. the other one or the or close i think if you know like the carrot and uh point exclamation tag and the comp i mean you don't necessarily also need like um but yeah and um dots everything and then like you should you should also add the dots uh after the parenthesis before csv just to avoid the word cases but right. i think if you know the dollar and the carrot you probably know like 90 percent of the stuff that you need <laughs> i think so yeah. we'll see um one of my friends i was complaining to about regular expressions when i was doing these exercises uh sent me a exercise of regular expression crossword puzzles where you have to oh, like yeah figure out what goes where based on the regular expression. And I will say I was not good at it. So I think I need to do some more practicing. Uh, I think it's mostly for people dealing with log file and stuff like that and huge file. And then it's super efficient, but yeah. Yeah. What I liked about the exercises though in this chapter is that they were like very relevant. I was like, yeah. oh, I actually will need to do this sometime because I will need to find all these files that meet these cases. So it felt yeah. extra practical. I agree. That was a good exercise. Uh, yeah. And then um, we can also find the position of pattern occurrences through functions like yeah. these, um, which can be used with fixed patterns or regular expressions. Um, and you can get into regular expression or capture groups to locate more complex patterns. Um, the getting into the capture groups is really what breaks my mind. <laughs> regular expressions. Yeah. It's um, true. So this exercise asked us to look at the differences between the results generated by these four functions. Um, so reg exec. Oh, yeah. It was one of the question. I, I know the difference between the two, but I didn't find the G. But yeah, you go ahead. You didn't find the what? No, at one point they asked for like a question of with G, like G, G reg X, right? And I don't oh, know yeah. what the G means. But yeah, I think ahead. it means global. Um, oh, global. Okay, makes sense. So reg exec just returns a list of equal length as the input yeah. um, sh with the integers of starting position of the match and length of the match or negative one for no match. Um, and then reg express I reg expert i don't ever know how you're supposed to say these things that's fine no one <laughs> but instead of yeah. returning a list of equal length as the input it returns to integer vectors of the same length um so same okay. information packaged up a little differently yeah i think it was on the list also maybe i'm unsure but like who cares yeah I'm gonna. I'm um, gonna. Every time I'm gonna use them, I'm gonna read the the help page because I'm stupid. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so then I was just demonstrating what the output looks like it's here. Nice, yeah. Um, and then this is what. No, this one is yeah. It's just in boss position. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
and the meta and unit. Similarly, these two versions with G appended to them um, returns basically the same idea of whether it's returned as a vector or as a list, but they both create a list this time of equal length as an input. Uh, oh, I dropped a G there in that first bullet, but that returns a matrix of starting positions oh. and the length of all matches instead of just a list, it's a matrix. And then Greg Expert returns a vector of all matches. Oh. Well, I guess I don't deal with enough of that to know why you need a matrix, but yeah, probably for distances. Uh, yeah, know. so you can see here that it's matrixed. Oh, oh, because you can have multiple. Right, because yeah, so the what's different from the previous functions that don't start with the G is that you can yeah. find any match within here. Um, so you can see in this, First cake, string. you should have multiple have, of them, yeah. Right. And so I have them. cake in here twice. Yeah, okay. Makes sense. Wait, how do you I'm trying to figure out how to read the matrix? So it's like um or, so it's like the first yeah. row is is the first element in cake. Well, I guess because there's only one well, only one element in the first uh, argument. I guess so the first row is cake right. and then the col first column is is the first element in the vector. Okay, I see. That makes right. Because I think you no. could use this in, uh, like if you had, I could have put multiple searches, and so those oh. would have been different rows in the matrix. Um, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Not a hundred percent confident on that one. No, uh, that's fine, no way. But that's that's good to know. Like, if I want to use more, like, uh, right text stuff, like. That's mean like, uh, yeah, just thinking about it, I probably have already stuff to do it, deal with it. Okay. No need to load the package. Cool. Um, and then again, this one is similar, but instead of the matrix, it's just doing um, vector. It has vectors within the list inside um, of the list, okay. positionally according to the matches. Okay, and then for replacing pattern occurrences, you can use sub uh, or G sub again. That G denotes that you're replacing all matches to pattern and not just the first. Um, ex yeah. This exercise just asks us to look at the. <clears throat> I didn't uh, know that, so I, I learned a lot from this one. No, but I ended up using it a lot during the later yeah. exercises because I was like, I don't want to think about how to write the yeah. regular expression. So it's a good little uh, cheat sheet, I guess. Um, and then yeah, I no, it's great because you don't need, it's already programmed. And then like you write your globing pass uh, the way you want it. I mean, the way you will write in shell. And then the um, glob to Rx will, uh, will, uh, will convert it. Yeah. Yeah, and so I cut off this slide a little bit, but you not know, zoomed out. Yeah, you can yeah. see that, that is the output. I, I use it for one of the exercises later, but yeah. Yeah, um, and that makes life. I love things that make life easier. Yeah, 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 easier. definitely worth learning. Yeah, but again, not that challenging to actually implement. Okay, um, so then you can other there are some other string operations you can do, substring extracts parts of strings between a given position range. Um, so we can see this being used in exercise 6.6 .6, oh. um, to take the output from regex per yeah. to uh, extract the pattern occurrences. So here's what I have. Um, I used an if else to account for the request to put out an A when there is not a match, um, but then I just use the attribute um, of match length and the output um, to extract those, the starting positions and the length. Um, and then I realized belatedly, I just fi fixed this, that I needed to add a negative one <laughs> or minus one uh, to get the right positional. I, that was a last minute catch for me. Okay. Um, and then there are some functions to translate characters, to make them uppercase, lowercase, um, and then to find and replace selected characters um, with 
the specified replacement character. Um, ordering strings, uh, you can use operators and functions like less than, equal to, greater than, sort, order, rank, all those things um, to sort on the lexicographic ordering of strings. Um, the order will depend on your set locale and your associated language on the lexical ordering rules of that language. Um, and he included instructions for how to view your locale. Mine was in English, US English, so. Yeah, right. you could have like, you are on Mac now, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, because you could have like, uh, on some windows I have seen, e EN, uh, US, that Latin one or two, depending of the user mm. of the Windows. And it's great mess. Yeah. Um, and then there was a fun little bonus section at the end of the chapter about random other atomic vector types that uh, I think aren't used very much. And so he just went over them quickly. So you can have integer vectors. Um, you can specify that numbers are integers by using the L suffix after the mm. number, or you can use as integer. Um, and they just basically behave like numeric vectors and are slightly are silently coerced to double as needed by functions. Um, raw vectors, this was definitely getting into the area of, I have no computer science knowledge, I'm making up that I know what bytes are, uh, but you can store bytes uh, unsigned 8-bit integers with range 0 to 255. Um, this doesn't include, yeah. you can't have a raw NA, which I thought was interesting. I sort of started thinking about like what, how are NAs represented fundamentally, but then decided to stop thinking about that. <laughs> um, and there are only a few functions that use raw vectors. Um, and I didn't fully understand the implications of this, but I thought it was interesting that logical operators yeah. differ from raw vectors, denoting bitwise operation. Um, I'm sure there are implications. Cases, but yeah. Sorry, what? It matters in some cases, but uh, not, not on our daily life. Yeah. Um, and then the lax type was complex vectors, um, which represent the imaginary unit of the square root of negative one. Um, you can indicate that they are this complex vector type by uh, suffixing i. Um, and this can be used with basic operators, math aggregation functions, and procedures such as FFT, solve, QR, and SVD, which- I mean, I, I've just used solve on this for so as Yeah, I didn't know what <laughs> any of those were. And I commented to Corey that I'm very glad I'm in a field where I do not have to use imaginary numbers and I can just pretend they don't exist. You could use the the byte version of it, like the um, the row. Like for example, uh, I have seen some US agency that still use CES file, and mm. in some cases they are um they are in byte formats. Mm. So I see some cases like uh, in my job where it happens, but mm. it's like marginal. <laughs> right. Uh and then there were some exercises. Um, so exercise 6.8 was a long list of answers. Oh, yeah. We can go quickly on it. I was I was correct on the first one and wrong on the second one. Yeah. Um, so if I first started out by like manually trying to count in my head of how many characters there were, and then I realized that I could just use end character and then catch. Yeah, but you, you shouldn't. <laughs> well, I did it mentally first, but then that wasn't that interesting to show on a slide of yeah, yeah. you know just a confused face of me concentrating really hard. Um, but then, so you can see here that there are eight characters and this is what it would format to. Um, and then there are 16 um, in the second string. Yeah, I was wrong on the second one because like raw string, uh, it's take like the first quote, then the dash, then the, I, I, I get it, the quote, but I didn't get like, I was counting 20 because I had like the, I counted the dash on both sides and the curly bracket on both sides. Right. And they are part of the raw string. Right. Apparently. So I was wrong. Right. Yeah. I did not catch that either. So using the end care uh, was illuminating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, this one. 
yeah the, this is just demonstrating that na yeah. doesn't make, work exactly like you think it will in uh character I mean, it's totally worse world no worse no like sorry what? Did, did you see like it's it's super weird what it does no yeah it is and so it just turns na into a character and then string. passed it but not passed it at the beginning passed it first then vectorize it and not right. vectorize it at the end yeah, yeah i didn't understand this at all i i don't i don't understand like what is causing that behavior i mean either anyway <laughs> i don't know what's yeah. the correct behavior so uh, yeah but yeah weird yeah i agree <laughs> um oh, so. then three was a lot of uh going through the different meanings of sprint f format strings um the you know s is the character this string. is more this is more useful than it looked like sorry say that again this is more useful than it looked like yeah um and uh, I don't think we need to go through each of these no. individually, but it was a good exercise to yeah. make sure that I actually knew what was going on. And then I didn't fully understand what field width was, but then one of the later questions, yeah, like connected the dots for me there to the, about the bytes present um, in the string or in the evaluation of the string. Wait, so the, by default. This is in bytes and not in, like, it's five bytes field width and not five characters. Is that what the later question? That's it's my understanding. Weird. Yeah, that that is low. that's so strange to me. I wonder why that's the default. Um, yeah, anyway. I think it's okay. because, like, the it's used the C function. Uh, behind the scene, it's used the C stuff. Oh, OK. And the C stuff is done that way. Because okay. C is probably using pointers. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> but that's just a, a guess. Like, I'm not sure. Cool. Um, so yeah. this is where we get that G stands for global. Um, and the difference is that without G, only gets the first match. With G, it gets all of them. Right. Uh, so the results of REPL is just true because uh, only the first in the pattern yeah. list will be used when you have a, a vector of things that you're trying to call. So that's a good warning for. It's a warning, yeah. That yeah. Was, I was I wasn't sure. I, I didn't remember if it was an error or warning, but yeah, it's a warning. Um, and uh, so that so Aaron will in English will always evaluate to less than zero, uh, because that is how we order our alphabet here. Um, I did just realize that I misspelled English, which is embarrassing. Um, but this may vary across languages. Yeah. Yeah, this is like, this is what this question I wasn't sure. Like, does it mean like, because here, if we assume English, uh, you correct, but then like, and how can I know like it varies across language? Like, right. And so, this is not yeah. one of his uh, gotchas trying to make you yes, just pay think, attention yeah. to the details. Um, so here, um, X is less than quoted 10, X is less than numeric 10. Yeah. Um, when you enclose 10 in quotes, of course, it to a string and depending on what X is set to, it may evaluate as more or less than 10 because strings evaluate first character, uh, for ordering and then the second character, whereas numbers are obviously ordered numerically yeah. so you can see here that um when you have the string 10 it does not evaluate in the way that you expect it to yeah. which also came up in a later problem uh, again so i don't really know what to make of this question i feel like yeah, he's I mean, is there, like let me see what i wrote a gotcha about, that uh... i didn't get i wasn't <laughs> he got me maybe um but I think X should always evaluate to itself yeah. as true. Like, yeah, I was like saying, yeah, I'm, I'm replying yes point uh, for interrogation. So my guess yeah, is I, yes, I but maybe I missed something. Yeah, right. yeah, I, I couldn't think of anything either. 
I mean, he had a couple things where some words, uh, like that example he kept using of like gross in English compared to gross in um, German. German, I think I, but that's not quite, the, that's, that's not relevant to this question. I, I couldn't, I was also didn't know if it was a trick question, but I couldn't think of anything. I mean, the fact that he's asking it makes me think that there is some trick here, but yeah, I think maybe I mean, the only cases where it will not be is like if the encoding of the character is different in one X and another X. Yeah, like the same with Zorro and Aaron, like mm -hmm. there's like a Z, like in an it like for example, you air printed correctly but then when you check behind the scene it's not the exact same character because of the encoding issue because it, what it uses is it, it's not i choose a bytes to compare right. it's a byte comparison but the thing is that it's like it's not just that it in this question isn't that it looks the same to us and when it's printed it's like yeah. it's comparing the same exact object i agree no yeah. it said so, yes too yeah uh, but without thought, understanding why why not <laughs> yeah it did make me think about um the like uh in one of our earlier chapters like with the floating point decibels about like how numbers won't always evaluate to what they look like they are because they're like very small differences far off in the yeah. decimal places not, not but, the case of character yeah yeah so i don't know what to make of that um so with yeah. match x y um it will be the length of x so here n because it is looking um it's based yeah it's One just sense. based on the first yeah it's it's uh, it's uh uh it's not a reverse that like you cannot uh yeah if you, you match y on x you will have another result right exactly um and so i i didn't know what to say for this one either the same I know that there is a difference when they evaluate, but I can't explain that. I mean, my my only understanding is like it's vectorized in one case, and for whatever reason, it's not vectorized in another one. Right. But I don't know why. Right. Like it, it's gonna it's gonna test against every uh, 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 possible value of x on the first one, and on the second one, it's it's top, but I don't know why. Right. So it's a mystery, but good to know that that's what happens with. My, my thought was that maybe like normally when you refer to a string inside the uh, inside the subsetting brackets, you're like trying to extract an element that has a particular name. Oh, yeah. So maybe it's that's like good. thinking maybe it's thinking like, yeah, it's treating any character like a name and it's if extracting you like name the vector. Maybe we would have something different. Yeah. I think if uh, it wasn't a named vector, guess. it would be, it would be, I don't know. Good guess, good guess. I will go with that, exp uh, uh, with it for now. Yeah, sounds good. Um, and then yeah. um, this is showing the difference between equals equals and in. Um, oh, they're vectorized yeah. differently. Equals equals is element wise with recycling, whereas percent in percent evaluates if elements of X exist anywhere in Y, yeah. uh, which is good, good to know because sometimes that difference is going to be very important. Uh, I didn't know this one. Did you do this? Well, yeah. So this one, I Corey and I talked for a while about like what he was even asking us to do. Um, one and... other person thinks, yeah. I didn't get it, but I just kind of treated it as a thought experiment. And so what I thought should happen is yeah. that if there's an NA, it basically should, in the things you're pasting together, it should uh, skip those values. So I I made a little yeah. you know, demo. My default will be like, drop it, like throw an error and stop, but yeah. Right. I mean, so, yeah, throwing you know, error stop is one way to do it, but like, if there's nothing there, oh, you replace it. Yeah. Okay. You should just like it does just pretend it doesn't exist, and then only include the element that is Makes there. Sense. And then, um, I was a little more stumped on like what I thought should happen if, uh, separator or collapse was, an NA. But then I 
it's like oh, it just should act as if they, it wasn't specified. I should saw an error also. Come on. So that was a weird question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, oh, this one, I have done this, this one, so. <laughs> this one was fun. Um, yeah. I had to not do it all the files on my computer because it would never finish when I tried to do it on my. Yeah. Uh, so I just did it in my downloads folder. Um, that was fast on mine. Huh. But what it does is like what I did, like I was surprised of, I think it's also reference Simlink, which is not linked, but like, so it's listing files that are just stored once, but referenced in another way. I am also on Mac and I got a bunch of file that's inside, for example, download, but I also reference just by Mac for the version in another directory. So I learned something, but uh, it was a good exercise. Yeah, I think part of what may have been confusing is that I have a lot of, or why I was so slow is because I have a lot of my like uh, work documents from Google Drive synced onto my no. computer, but they're like not really there unless I download them. And so I like, maybe that was breaking it. I don't know. Um, yeah, that, that makes sense. It might be really slow on cloud storage. Right. But it like, they show up as, if they're in like a folder and close to my like it's it's anyway I, I i like it this exercise yeah and i think this is highlighting that uh you know yeah. recursive is an option in list files um using this globe to rx to create the um regular expression and then i actually didn't know about a me mebabyte as a unit yeah i googled it also but i don't think it's divided by two well, no, so I didn't, when I did it with the accurate one, I didn't have any files that were big enough in my downloads okay. folder. So I just stuck in the divided by two there to uh, yeah, get something returned. And so, yeah, it was identifying the multiple times I've downloaded my company's benefits guide. Um, Cause I keep wanting to know about health insurance apparently. Um, so then exercise 6.11 asked us to uh, read in a text file and uh, then use string wrap and cat to output it um, on the console in a nicely formatted way. I used a paragraph from Frankenstein where he actually awakens the monster. Um, still kind of spooky season. Um, what I didn't, I didn't quite understand this, but it seemed that we needed to set the width both within yeah. string wrap and in cat i don't have an explanation for it but it didn't work when it was just in one or the other i never use it except like no it's useful like when you print on something limited so i like mm -hmm. it learning about it but i can't say like i will use it yeah um exercise six. yeah i i just just also had that problem I, I i never really understood and you can yeah i don't know it's weird it doesn't behave quite like i expected to when i no. i'm not sure what's going on yeah well it is what it is uh so exercise 6.12 asked us to implement a simplified version of base name and directory name uh which return either just the base name of the file or the directory path um, of a file. Um, so this is another fun use of regular expressions and the uh, function G sub. Um, I just was using some of the files that I had grabbed in the previous uh, search right. of my downloads folder. Um, this, the doing just the directory name did give me <laughs> uh, some more trouble than just doing the file name that was pretty easy, but the uh, here I ended up using some capture groups to indicate that it had to both start and end with a slash. Um, and I, it took me a couple of rounds of trial yeah, to get work that. On every, uh, it would work on Mac and Linux, but not on Windows. Right. Weirdly. Yeah, because the root users is a name, name drived in Windows. I mean, right. it does not have root user, but like the, it starts with C, uh, semicolon something, or D, semicolon something. But that's fine. No. Right. <laughs> you, you did well on the exercise. 
Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't get mine to work ever for the the directory name. But that's a good point. I guess Windows does start with C right. colon slash slash and then yeah. And then yeah, sometimes I, I had a problem where I uh a lot of times when I write out directories, I use the tilde mm -hmm. for home and then slash, and then I didn't even, even know how to represent that. Is that like a, a punctuation or I don't know, it was weird. So mm. Like that you mean the regular expression? Yeah, like is uh I don't know. Let me look at the cheat sheet. Uh, Honestly, the regular expression cheat sheets are like kind of inscrutable themselves. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Cheat to the cheat sheet. And they're they have differences too, which I guess maybe is because there's multiple engines, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's confusing. Oh, they are like the cheat sheet does not help at all. <laughs> Um, okay, so then continuing on, um, here is another round of use regular expression to recreate this function that already exists. Uh, here we're taking away trailing and leading spaces um, and so. leaving internal spaces to not get rid of actual spaces between words. Yep. Um, this again <laughs> took me a couple of rounds of trial and error, but basically, uh, if it starts with a space, one or more spaces, yeah. or if it starts yeah, with, or it ends space. with one or more spaces, replace it with nothing. Yeah, good. Um, well, this one is easy. Oh, so I skipped a couple of exercises here because no, they were fine. All, like need to do all of variations on yeah. regular expression exercises and I was running out of time and I thought if I had to write any more regular expressions I'd yeah, that classic one uh, getting the hashtag the email address and then yeah. like the email link yeah I I looked at that one I was like I I don't have it in me anymore you can probably find like answer on, online or so like but yeah yeah did you? I, wait, I, I didn't do those either. Did you do them, Olivier? No, uh, I have done like the next one also. Okay. Yeah, but uh, not this one. Yeah, I just my my willingness to put up with the regular. Yeah, no, no, it's good enough. Good luck. Um, and so this was just asking about the different uh, yeah, different other like atomic vector types. I realized my formatting is messed up here. Not That's bullet fine. in the way that I want to, but basically. The I is the imaginary uh, unit, the L is for integer, and I, again, do not know how to interpret. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, you, you can just type off it and it will say like it's, it's a raw type. Yeah. Right, right. So yeah, so it's a raw, I think it's just representing 42 as yep. a raw type. Yep. So. Um, Stringy. This was funny. I realized looking at the string I package is authored by this textbook author. So yeah, he yeah, yeah. was motivated to have us learn how to use it. Um, so there's an option in there where you can sort, you can add sort numeric. So it will sort some strings in a numeric fashion, which is super convenient. And um, then this final one was dealing with that sort of uh field width being based on bytes not characters and um how do you try to deal with that again conveniently using his package yeah um, <laughs> and you can specify a width and a padding character um, to format them a little better i'm realizing now that this one doesn't look right I didn't notice that before. And I think it's 11, no? Is it correct? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Maybe there's like something like the C. I don't know. This is weird. On mine, mm -hmm. I had to put side equals both for as an art. Oh, mm -hmm. wait, no, you just used it. I know, but you used string pad both. Right. I just used string pad. So, huh? Um, I don't know. I don't know what to make of that. Yeah. There should be one maybe more. There, maybe the C is multiple character, like the, we should, but, well, no big deal. Yeah. Well, it was close enough. Though. Um, so but I think yeah, that, Springy is awesome. Yeah. 
Um, so that's it for the exercises that I did. If anyone yeah, did, I didn't do the next one also, like so you could. Uh, yeah, I didn't do it. Um, if anyone did any of the exercises that I didn't get to, I think, uh, yeah, fourteen nice or fifteen. To do them like uh, because like yeah, as you said, you kind of reflect a bit on material. I think they are well designed, but sometimes yeah, they are a bit more too much gotcha, I guess. But yeah, right, and uh, you know, eventually I have to do my real coding work and not <laughs> practice exercises. And uh, but oh, was, I did uh, I did fourteen here. I'll post what yeah. I had for. Do you want to share your oh, yeah, screen? Yeah. Green Road Fox. Hey, it's on the screen. Um, well, yeah, let's see. I don't know if it'll work if I. Uh, I guess it's but basically I have uh. This was the one to remove. To remove the the trailing. Oh and yeah, that's similar. Spaces. Yeah, and you um, also do the minus one, so it makes sense somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I, I it took me a while to figure that out too. That you have to if you add the two, you have to subtract one. Um, but yeah, it was similar to the answer for six point six, I think, for exercise six. Um. Yeah. But I mean, I guess the the only weird thing is that when I did uh, when I use uh, the, you know, I saved this the output from uh, reg x in this capture object, and I had to to use the capture object as an argument in hmm. uh, sub in the in substring. I had to oh, that's why you the extract word. the list, yeah, because it it was a list of one, but it mm. uh, the attribute the 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 named attribute capture start is an attribute of the, uh, mm -hmm. I guess the matrix may be in the list and not of the list. So you have to extract that, that confused me a little bit, but um, yeah, that's all. Mm -hmm. okay. And I don't really know how, I was thinking about how I would approach 6.19 and I, I, I'm not really sure. Um, I mean, you, I think you would have to use that's complicated because you kind of well you can check what it does in strict pad. You can just yeah, that's true. Yeah. You can just do yeah. like uh his design choice and yeah and see that's one way of saying it because it's probably like let me see radium um stringy. Yeah, let me I'll Let's look see too. what it's doing. S -tier um, pad. Hmm. So it's quite wow. It it's short. match. It's using much arguments side, or it's a switch, like uh, a lot of function that we have not seen. So I, I, I think switch basically chooses, uh, not chooses an expression to evaluate based on the first argument. So like, I guess side is either right, both or left. So here that means you, depending on what you choose, it gives you, it evaluates either the argument for uh yeah right both are like oh yeah that's it. But i guess so, you... so this is just referring to the other function so the yeah that so we have to look at how it does this so yeah. three pad right yeah yeah and uh. three pad left so you basically like as i do three pad left or three pad right depending on the switch and then and then string pad right is uh is in c Oh, so we don't know. So yeah, we don't know. <laughs> so we don't It'll know. It'll be cool, but it's we need to check. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Huh. Well, it was good. Thanks, Emma, for doing it. Yeah. It turns yeah, out there wasn't was really good. you know, there wasn't that much content in this chapter really, uh, except you know, the reality I mean, that regular expressions are hard. I mean, even if not much context, it probably took you a long time. To, I mean, it took me time to do the exercise with everything. Yeah, for so. sure. Yeah. So you know. It's true, like it does not have like, and it's. I think it's important. Com I mean, the Globe Two RX like definitely was will be useful, and I didn't know the the um, the car ma match the character match. I know the the um, the one like you just match for the first uh, letters, but I didn't know the other one. So um, yeah, good enough. For yeah. me. Good. So I guess we can end up a bit earlier. Yeah. I don't I don't have anything else to say about it. Thanks for doing it. And see you next week. Okay. Yeah. See you.